Just down the hall from Carl, Renee Bayarjon is finding out when that sense of the possible begins to develop. Renee's group puts on magic shows for babies, with results that have astonished her colleagues around the world. Each show tests whether babies know some basic physical rule, that objects can't just disappear, for example. If babies have the knowledge, they will be puzzled or surprised or intrigued by our magical events. And we know when babies are surprised or puzzled, they tend to scrutinize the events, to look and look and look at them. And so what we do in our experiments is compare infants' responses to magical events and non-magical or real events to see whether they look longer at the magical than at the real ones. As Holly's attention is captured, a hidden observer starts the timer. This time, it's a non-magical, normal event. The three-month-old is soon bored. She looks away, and the clock is stopped. Now for the impossible or magical event. Holly stares. She really scrutinizes the event. That means she's surprised. Even at three months, she knows the world doesn't work this way. Backstage, there's a simple explanation. Two dolls moved independently. But Holly is riveted and even startled by such an illogical sight. Over many trials, three-month-olds have been consistently surprised by the disappearing doll trick. They all seem to understand it's not possible. But take a look at the next result. Babies like Felix, who were just two weeks older, were not surprised. Renee concluded that their worldview was more sophisticated. These babies spontaneously came to the conclusion that we were using two different objects, two minis, to produce the event. And so what we did to test this interpretation was to lower the screen at the start of each event. We say, mm -mm, no, this is not what's going on here. Okay, he thinks, I see they've got just one doll up there. But unknown to Felix, when the arch is raised, the second doll is slipped back in. And once again, these slightly older babies were back to being surprised, which seems to confirm Renee's conclusion that they had figured out the original trick. In the box experiment, Renee's been testing what babies know about falling. Three-month-olds, like Holly, don't find the non-magical event interesting. They soon look away. But in the magical variation... That's much more interesting, really worth staring at. So it seems that by three months, babies have learned that unsupported things should fall. But once again, there was a twist to the story. Slightly older babies usually weren't upset when the box just hung in midair. Now it was the researchers' turn to be surprised. We were very, very puzzled by that result. And it actually took us weeks and weeks and months of thinking through what could be going on and trying all kinds of different hypotheses until finally, one day, we came to this idea that, my goodness, what if they thought that somehow the finger, which was the only thing in contact with the box, had become attached to it? And that's why they weren't surprised. They were generating an explanation, in this case, an incorrect one, but a, a sort of 
relatively plausible one for the box's failure to fall. To test this explanation, they changed the trick so that the finger lost contact with the box. And sure enough, the babies were once again startled by the sight. It is absolutely remarkable that such little babies, when shown our surprising events, you know, are actively thinking about what we show them and actively searching for and finding explanations for what they see. I think it really gives us a fascinating insight into what babies are doing when they look at the world around them.